PJ? Yeah, what's... Oh, my God. How? How? I think it might be food poisoning. That's not food poisoning. I, I drank some milk. I think you're possessed. I think it might have been bad. Milk didn't do this. So, don't drink it. Like, really. Don't drink it. I'm telling you, man. It's not the milk. Okay, yeah, it was the milk. When it comes to visual effects, most of the time, you're never just doing one effect. It usually takes a combination of things to get the look that you're going for. For example, the demon possession effect in this video is actually a combination of five different effects with their own little workflows. The black eyes, veins, and the absence of any blinking were all done in fusion, while the sickly looking skin and large eyes were done in the color tab, and the demon voice obviously was done in Fairlight. In in order to pull off this effect, you'll need a shot of your actor, and that's it. No clean plate needed, which is weird to say, but really, you, you don't need one. Once you've brought your footage into DaVinci Resolve and placed it in your timeline, select it and head to the Fusion page. You don't even need to create a Fusion clip, which again, is weird to say. Once in the Fusion page, the first thing you'll want to do is add a background node to an empty section of your node area. Then disconnect Media In from Media Out and connect your background with Media Out. Select your media in one node and add a color corrector. With your color corrector's node selected, press one to add it to your left monitor. Then in the inspector, click on options and select pre-divide post multiply. Next, click on correction, lower the saturation to around 0.2 and drag the color wheel towards green. Add B-splines where necessary and create a mask so that the color correction only applies to your actor's exposed skin. Next, add a planar tracker after your color corrector node. In the inspector, change tracker to hybrid point area and your motion type to translation rotation scale. Create a shape around your actor's face and click track to end. We're not doing anything with this now, but it's going to be very very important very soon. One of the things that makes this effect a little more creepy is the fact that the possessed person doesn't blink. The only problem is I blink a lot in the original footage. To fix this, place your playhead on a frame where your actor's eyes are open. Then add a time stretcher node to an empty area of your node section. In the inspector, set your source time to the frame number where your playhead is located and disable any keyframes. This will create a freeze frame of the frame with your eyes open. The only portion of this frame that we actually want to keep is the area around our eyes. So add a polygon to an empty area of your node section and draw a shape around your eyes. Then in the inspector, soften the edge and click invert. To merge our freeze-framed eyes with our moving face, add a matte control to your time stretcher node and connect your polygon to the garbage matte input. Next, select your planar tracker and in the inspector, click create planar transform. Connect your matte control to your planar transform input, then merge the planar transform over your color corrector. Select all of the nodes you just added, create a group and label that group as face, then merge the group over your background. Next, we're going to create our black veins. Now, there's a ton of ways to create veins, but in this case, I used a combination of a black background and a third party fractal noise effect that I will have linked in the description of this video. First, add a black background to your composition, then connect a fractal noise effect to the mask input of your background. Select your fractal noise node, then in the inspector, set your fractal type to plasma, bring your detail slider up to 12, your gain down to 0.7, contrast up to 2, and your scale down to 0.9. Then in animation, bring your speed all the way down to keep your noise from moving. Next, create B splines as necessary to determine where you want your veins to be, softening the edges to make them blend in with the skin. Finally, create a new planar transform from your planar transform tracker in your face group and add the planar transform in between the background node for your veins and the merge node. Then select your background node, fractal noise, and masks, create a group, and label it veins. Next, we're going to create our black eyes. First, add a background node to an empty section of your node area. Then with your background node selected, add another. This will merge the new background node with the old one. Select your merge node and press 1 to add it to the left monitor. Select a background node that's connected to the foreground input of your merge, then grab the eyedropper and choose the color of any light reflection in your eye in the right monitor. Then add a B-spline and draw a shape around that reflection and soften the edge. 
Next, select a background node connected to the background input of your merge, then grab the eyedropper and choose the color of your actor's pupil in the right monitor. Then add a B-spline and draw a shape around the right eye. Select your background nodes, B-splines, and merge and duplicate those nodes into an empty section of your node area and adjust your B-splines for the left eye. Then merge your left eye group over your right eye group. Then grab your merge node and add it to the main composition. Finally, add a planar transform to the group of nodes nodes for your eyes and group everything together and label it black eyes. And we're all done with the fusion portion of this effect. Up next, we have some stuff to do in the color page, but first... We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. So, you're working on a project, you're almost done with the edit, and boom, you're missing a shot. On top of that, you've got no way and no time to go out and get it. What do you do? You use stock footage. And if you're a smart editor, you get that stock footage from Artgrid. Artgrid has a huge library of high-quality, story-driven stock footage shot by real filmmakers. They're one of the only stock footage sites out there that gives you access to the raw and log versions of their footage up to 8K resolutions, and they give you all of the camera information for each clip, which is super important if you want to be able to color grade your stock footage to match your video. Plus, with ArtGrid's unlimited license, you can use any clip in their library on YouTube, social media, commercial work, and even film and television. You're covered everywhere. ArtGrid will be linked in the description of this video, and if you sign up using that link, you'll get two months free on top of your annual subscription. That's 14 months for the price of 12. That's a good deal. That's a smart deal. And you're a smart editor. So click the link in the description of this video and sign up for ArtGrid today. And now, on with the show. The first step in the color page is to create your overall look. I personally didn't do much here, just some color correction, a color space transform to Cineon Film Log, and a film LUT. Then I used a LUT from Motion VFX's music video pack that gave my skin that sickly look, used a qualifier to limit that LUT to my skin, and dropped the key down to 0.5. Then it was time to make my eyes bigger. Place your playhead at the beginning of your clip, add a serial node to the end of your node tree, and add a warper effect. This effect can also be used in the fusion tab, but we'll need to track it in order for it to look right, and the easiest way to do that is in the color tab. So. We're doing it here. In the inspector, set your on-screen controls to three, then add restricting control points in a wide section around your eyes by holding shift when you click. Then add your control points in a similar pattern inside of your restricting points. Change the show drop-down box in the inspector to warp vectors, then rotate the vector arrows until each arrow in your control points is pointing towards the closest restriction point. Then drag your control points towards your restricting points until you have a look that you're happy with. Once you're done, it's time to track the effect. Make sure your playhead is at the beginning of your clip and open up your tracker. In the top right of your tracker, select effect, then add a tracking point to a high contrast area of your image and track your clip. Once you're all done, the warper effect should remain still throughout your shot. The last step is to create the demon voice, which we'll do in the Fairlight tab. This part is pretty easy. Simply duplicate your dialogue clip onto a new track, then in the inspector, tweak the pitch to your liking. This will give you a layered voice with two different pitches, which is kind of perfect for that demon possession sound. Okay, yeah, it was the milk. But that's it for me. To learn more about how to use the Fusion page, click here, and until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.